Last week was wild for AI developers. Google DeepMind launched Gemini 3.0 and it shook the entire tech community. It brought state of the art reasoning, world leading multimodal understanding and a new level of agent coding. And right after that, OpenAI dropped GPT 5.1 Codex Max, their new frontier model for deep and persistent engineering tasks. It is faster, more capable, more token efficient and built to work on long workflows using compaction. With both promising next generation of agentic coding, I had to try them and see which model actually performs better in real coding scenarios. So hey there everyone, I am Anindam and in this video I am going to test GPT 5.1 Codex Max and Gemini 3.0 Pro to see how they compare in speed, quality, reasoning and real world use cases. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, do it now and without delaying any further, let's get started. Now let's talk about GPT 5.1 Codex Max. This is OpenAI's frontier engineering focused model designed for long horizon autonomous coding. It is built to handle multi-hour refactors, repo-wide debugging, branch creation, CI tasks and full agent loops without failing apart. Codex Max uses a compaction system that maintains coherence across millions of tokens, automatically refreshing and trimming its state as it works. So instead of collapsing over long sessions, it stays consistent which is rare in current models. Benchmark wise, it is extremely strong. It hits 77.9% on Sui Bench verified and it excels at real world peer creation and code review. And because it uses 30% fewer reasoning tokens, long sessions are significantly cheaper and faster. You can use it through the CLI, the ID extension, cloud sandboxes, and as of today, it is only available via Codex. You cannot use it via APIs, but it will also come soon. Now, let's talk about Gemini 3.0 Pro. So Google positions it as their most advanced agentic multimodal coding model. It is built to handle entire workflows from a single prompt. Gemini does not just only write code. It can plan, scaffold, document and refine the full project with a mix of reasoning and multimodal context. Under the hood, it uses a native multimodal model. So it can read and combine text, code, images, diagrams, UI screenshots, and even video that guides its decisions. That makes it especially strong for tasks involving architecture diagrams, design specs, or front-end prototypes. Also, the context window is huge, over 1 million tokens. You can throw an entire monorepo product spec and design doc at it and it still keeps track of everything. Gemini integrates across VS Code, JetBrains, Android Studio and Terminal workflows acting like a high speed full stack assistant. Awesome. Now let's see this in action. Okay. So I have opened my cursor editor which is my default editor and I will be using Gemini 3 Pro via cursor and I will use GPT 5.1 Codex Max via Codex. Here, first I will give it a task to create a game. So let's see how it performs. So first I will go to the GPT 5.1 directory and use Codex. And let's open Codex. I require approval. So I have opened Codex and here you can see that I am using the GPT 5.1 Codex Max. So let me increase the font so you can see it better. So if you're using an existing repo, the first thing that you can try out is using the init command, which creates the agents.md file, which makes it easier for Codex to understand the whole project. But here we are creating a project from scratch, so we don't need that. I will now give it the prompt to create the ping pong game. So let me paste it here. Okay. So here you can see the prompt is quite simpler, which is a two player game and Tron style ping pong game, which is inside a glowing neon area and the rest instruction here. So I will not go in depth about it. So let me run it and let me close the side area and increase this size. So you can see it has started working. So first it has created the plan, which is create a neon arena layout with canvas controls and HUD for two player Tron Pong and the other steps here as well. It has started working. 
we can see that it is designing the ball physics and the visual effects which is quite important for this project okay so we need to approve the following command so you can see also it has mentioned the reason here so need to create a new game html slash chase in the read only sandbox workspace to deliver the request feature so it is just adding this to the html file so i will proceed okay so now it is making the following edits so changing few steps so i will also accept this so it has already done the two to do's and the final thing is remaining and that is also done so now it is creating the final summary and instructions so let's see what it has created awesome so it has also given us the instruction so first we need to open the index.html locally to play and tweak the speed and the angle in the settings to block and tweak speed angles in the settings so now let's open it okay so index.html let's create a new terminal and resize the terminal okay let's go to and run this command awesome so you can see that it has created the game and now you can play it as well so the logics are pretty good you can also see it has showing the status of it if it is touching the age and the commentary kind of stuff as well so i really like this and overall the experience is much faster okay yeah i'm not good at playing this but, but overall codex did it really well so now let's see how gemini performs on the same tasks okay so let me close this and clear the tab so we'll minimize this tab and this as well and we'll and we'll open the chat window here so you can see i am using gemini 3 pro here and here i will give it the same task and ask it to create the ping pong game so let me paste the prompt here and i will also mention the folder so you use gemini 3.0 pro folder so now let's run it okay so it is planning the next moves and let's see how it actually works let's reduce the space a bit so we can see a bit better okay so it has added the html file can review as well okay so it has added so i will keep all the changes and now let's see the code first okay so it has added the code here now let's open the terminal again so this time we'll open another terminal and go to gemini folder now just run it using live server awesome so let's play this a bit you can see that the overall logic is working and the ball is moving correctly the physics part is correct as well like last time but in terms of the aesthetics i would say the previous one was better right so in that part i will give an extra edge to gpt1 but this also did really well so now so now let's move on to the next task to see which model outperforms the other in my cursor again and i will close the current server and i will close the current server and clear it close this this time we'll again use codex so create a new folder so now let's write the prompt here so create a python program that shows a ball bouncing inside a spinning hexagon which is a very common example that a lot of people has tried so i will also mention use and now let's run it we can see that it has started working so let me let me again minimize the sidebars and increase this size now it is much more visible so again it has created the plan oh okay so it is currently using the gemini folder so i need to mention this use the codex folder instead of gemini so let's see how it is working okay this time it has got the correct directory so i will proceed is currently working on the physics part of it okay so now i will proceed again so now it has asking for the permission so it has written the python script into this folder as requested so i will just proceed with yes okay 
so you can see that it has done it and also mentioned us the steps to use it so in the new terminal and let's go to test 2 and run uv in it so i will just create a new v file and add uv at pi game So it will just install the packages now let's check the file name once uh, so it is spinning hex so we'll run uv run and here we go we have the game running so you can see that it is working well one thing i noticed here is sometime it is just going out of the boundary partially so this is the only flaw i saw but overall the physics is correct here you can see that it is doing it correctly but yeah apart from that going outside of this uh, it is doing completely fine so let's just close it now we will test the exact same thing with gemini so let's see how gemini works with this so let me reduce it and open the chat window here and go to the agent mode and then i will just paste the prompt here and i will now add the directory here slash so directory and run it so you can see that it has started planning the moves it is just creating the folders currently and adding the required dependencies we can see the file as well so let's bring the sidebar you can see that it has created a test2 folder it's just adding the file here and it has added it so let's accept everything and now i will open the terminal once again and create a new terminal let's go to name and i so let me again initialize uv So I'm just installing the required dependencies. You can also see the code here. This is the code, what it has done, and we have installed the dependencies. Now let's just run it. You will run. Let's check the file name once. It's main.py. Main.py. And now let's see how it performs okay so it has opened here we can see that it is much cleaner and just like the previous one the physics logic is completely correct and this time it is not going outside of the line so we can here say that gemini 3 did really well than gpt5 and in this case i will give the extra edge to gemini so let's just close it awesome so we have completed two tests now it is time for the third and the last one so in this test i will give it an image and ask it to clone the ui of it and i will see how both performs so let's start so let me open codex first and here just for context we'll be using this image as we can see here this is an ui image of an voice ai platform so we'll give this as a reference and ask it to create an ui so let me give the reference to codex and see how it performs so i will first refer the image using this image as a reference and we'll use the sample.png and ask it to recreate the exact layout in next.js using react component and tailwind css match the spacing color typography and structure as closely as possible and use test3 folder in gpt5 codex So let's see how it works. Okay, so it has created the plan and create an XJS style project structure in test3 folder. Implement the layout, review the accuracy. So proceed. We can also see what it is adding. So let's close this and see the test3 folder here. You can see it is adding the basic structure. Create ignore by next.js config. Okay, it has implemented the two to do's and the final one is remaining and it is done as well. Now let's see what's the final output it had created. 
so you can see that it has given the summary it has created the project implemented everything there and now all we need to do is just go to the folder run npm install and npm run dev so let's go there npm install so here we are just installing all the required dependencies so these are added now just run npm run dev okay so we can see it inside cursor awesome we can see that it has cloned the ui and it looks quite similar to the image that we have passed it and you can see this section also looks quite similar and it has cloned this really well so one thing that i noticed is it has kept a lot of space on the left and the right side so it looks quite like an you know web version of the image not a clear ui so this is one thing i feel could be improved and this should be the whole page and there should not be any space in the left and the right but apart from that it did really well so now let's see how gemini performs on that now let's close it and now we'll open gemini and paste the same prompt use similar png and and recreate the ui in next.js using react components and the same prompt that we given last time and we'll just mention so let's see what it does this time for reference we can open the sidebar and see what it is doing so let's close this okay so you can see that it has created this folder and all the basic configurations now it will add the, the stylings so let's wait till final and see what it generates so let's uh, reduce the size so we can see it better okay so it has made the changes so i will keep all and now we just need to run these things so let's open the terminal and let's go to this folder and run npm install by just installing all the dependencies so i don't think i need to repeat it again and now we'll just run npm run dev and let's see how the ui looks this time awesome it has generated the app let me reduce this awesome so we can see that it has cloned it almost correctly so everything we had in the image it has cloned that you can see the text the boxes everything looks quite similar to the current one one cool thing is it has also copied the animation you can see the small animation it has added here as well and you can see the transition which was not present in the image so overall gemini did it really good so we can also see that it has added these functionalities as well which is pretty cool and so in this test i will rate gemini higher than gpt 5.1 because it created the ui one shot and it has added all these functionalities so overall the experience is great and that's it based on our test we saw that both models are strong coding assistants they can reason build and get you to a working solution fast but if i have to pick one i would rate gemini 3 pro higher it cloned the ui from an image almost perfectly and nailed the hexagon game logic with better structure. GPT 5.1 Codex Max was fast and nearly accurate in most steps, but it lacks the deeper multimodal understanding and the final polish that Gemini delivered. Overall, both models are great, but Gemini felt more complete for these tasks. If you have tested these models, do share your experiences in the comment section. I would love to know how it worked for you. Also, if you found this video helpful, do share it with your friends and let me know which topic you want me to cover next. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching the video till the end. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.